Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with another vehicle introduction. Woohoo! If you know the Lego movie, there's a space guy named Benny, and he likes to say, Spaceship! And that's what we have here today. Let me introduce you to my 1993 Chevy Lumina APV. That's a quick rock around, but let's go a little bit slower. Uh, but this today is February 23rd-ish. So I bought it yesterday, so it'd be close to the 22nd. Uh, <clears throat> it came from Denalda, Alberta, which is uh, just north of Stetler, Alberta, probably an hour and a half south of Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, it's got 180,000 kilometers on it. And uh, I'm in love with it, the shape of it anyway. Uh, it's got a 3.8 Series 1 V6 in it, but we'll get into that in a moment. Actually, let's get into it now. Already popped the hood. It's kind of an introduction and tour video. It's got a lot of issues, I say, that kind of need to be looked at. Come on now. No. So let's start at the beginning. By me getting used to, uh, there's lots to get used to with this van. Okay. So it has a prop rod hood. Here's our Series 1 3100, 3800. Uh, it's in fairly okay condition, but as you'll find on this van, everything is dirty, so we'll have to address that. Cool and overflow tank, <coughs> excuse me, windshield washer fluid, uh, brake fluids back there, transmission and oil dipstick that you see there, coil pack, your typical 3800 Series 1. We've got it in the 94 Buick. <coughs> So we'll do lots of service work. There's the EGR. That's cool. Air silencing dam, which is kind of broken. So we'll go, maybe, maybe not. Air filter of some kind in there. Uh, this looks a little interesting. A vent for the headlight. I don't know what those are for. And yeah, it looks like we're missing a section of the spoiler too. So we got a, and that looks like a whole front bumper part, unfortunately. Uh, we do have a crack in the windshield. We'll look at that on the inside. I gotta get inside. It's cold. My fingers are freezing. Okay, so if you've never been in one of these before, they're known for their really long nose. And of course, I have the hood up, so you can't see that. But you can tell by like the foot of carpet that's in here. It's super big. Which is kind of that, if you listen to the Motor Week review of it, that airy, airy feeling. And absolutely, that's exactly what this vehicle has in spades. The dash is in good condition. Everything is dirty. Like there is dirt, stuff stuck everywhere. Uh, it originally had a steering wheel cover on it. And it's like, well, how is the steering wheel underneath? Underneath, It's actually great shape, but needs a great cleaning. Everything needs a super cleaning on it. Uh, this one does come equipped with electric mirrors. So this would be your, you turn that left or right. When he showed us the car this past Saturday, Fortunately slash unfortunately he washed it for us, which means when it's negative 20 outside, everything is frozen. This vehicle has power windows, power door locks. Is it frozen? Yep, that's frozen closed. Uh, door locks work though, so you can lock and unlock the doors. You have your typical whatever. You got your hood release, brake release, press to park brake. Down below me is actually a fuel release. Has cruise control with all the white stuff removed. Uh, wipers don't work okay no biggie <laughs> we'll find out maybe we've got a fuse or something like that tilt wheel we're talking with an automatic transmission question for the comments are these gauges supposed to be to be backlit or just top lit because mine are top lit but I don't know if I've got bulbs in the back that are out currently full of fuel as you can tell <clears throat> maybe not so much uh, the fuel gauge doesn't work or says works occasionally same with the wipers they work occasionally he says uh, the rear wiper does work, so if we come over here and there she goes. But the uh, the unit's coming out a little bit, so we'll address that. Slot machine climate system. The rear defogger's on. Let's turn that off. Um, and turn this one down a little bit. Um, it's got a stereo cassette. If you're used to 80s stuff, this is all standard fare. Interior dome light switch, which means it turns off the interior lights. Period. If you have a door open or not, or it works with the door. 
doesn't turn them on. You have to actually, in theory, rely on this one. But I have not successfully got it to engage into the on position, like to turn the interior lights on. So uh, per what the owner manual says. So we might have to tweak on that too. Uh, rear fan control, you can switch it to rear control or you can actually just control it up here yourself. All it is in this van is a recirc. So it just takes floor air and recirculates it. So in the winter time, it just blows cold air on the back of your head. Um, it, the actual manifold for it is actually up here. There's two facing forward, three facing back. And then the fan is actually down there. Um, the fair, uh, air intake, it seemed like in the owner's manual, if you ran anything on heater, that it would actually throw some air towards that, but I highly doubt it at this point. I don't think, I think it just sucks floor air, but we'll see. Uh, for storage compartments, we have this guy down here, which uh, contains all my paperwork and some tape. Uh, you got two cup holders. This would be where the ashtray would normally live if it had one, but this one's long gone. That's fine. Um, this is actually coming down um, when I was messing around coming home today uh, It doesn't exactly go into front dash mode very fast and it's a vacuum driven system, which is fine But uh, we gotta you know, maybe check some some hoses and stuff down there uh, Glove compartment which contains our fuses which I'm hoping our windshield wiper fuse is blown for whatever reason and then other odds and ends Fuses that's nice uh, this car came with, uh, there's our RPO sticker when I've got all that diffused. Oh, that's all the way rolled around is what that is. So that's fine. It's just for some reason got flipped all the way. So anyway, uh, this is the pillow that came with it. And this is the gross uh, additional beverage holder and uh, carpet mats, which I will dump because there's no saving those. But everything's really got a nice coat of dirt on it. Uh, you got map lights up front and a compartment with crap in it, which is gross. Uh, I haven't even looked in the doors. I don't really... Oh, there's some light bulbs in that. And yeah, more assorted trash. Uh, the seats themselves are pretty cool. They're dirty, but other than that, uh, slide forward and back. This is cool. There's a knob on the side here that you can actually turn to actually moves the seat up or down in the back. It's not like a lever that you pull and, and clutch mechanism. So whatever, that's neat. Um, coming into the back of the vehicle here, oof. <clears throat> it's a seven seater, the rear seats are down. So uh, we've got three up front, three up back, and they each have two spots. So these are all set back one, which is good because um, that gives you just enough leg room, but you can actually notch them into the front part here. <clears throat> if I come back here to this rear seat, bonus stuff, whatever is in that. The McDonald's, yeah. Anyway, so you have uh, the fan control here for the fan that's down there and a little ashtray uh, coming up here. You've got your fan controls. So there's that. No bonus meal over here. Uh, we have our door. This is uh, technically, it mentions in the manual that it uh, you could get a, an electric door, but in this case you can't. So uh, just a matter of pulling and push out and open she comes. And there you go. Uh, this one's also kind of, at this point, restricted by how frozen and wet the thing, poor thing was. Uh, you got lap belts for either side. Uh, and the middle belt gets a lap belt only. Boy, that wind is super duper cold. Let's close this door. It's a double latch, so you pull it back to open it. And it'll actually latch open, and then you have to move it forward to de-latch it uh, the other way. Here's our back seat. In that compartment lays the... I don't think there's actually any jack mechanism in here. Yeah, so she doesn't have a jack. <laughs> so that's uh, neato, I guess. Let's just leave that off. A uh, guy had a bale of hay in here apparently and that just went to town. We got some, um, looks like an accessory belt of some kind. All right, and then on this side we have our power supply. That's a 20 amp 12 volt. That's not going, you know, that's going to town type stuff. Oh. Is that where those rear speakers are? They're in the door. Interesting. Uh, back here for these. Uh, can I double hand this or not? There should be a lever here. Uh, yeah. Nice thing about these seats is I can actually take them out and then wash them in the house where it's warm for now because it's it's going to be winter for a while. Um, guys back here can sit. 
and also smoke <laughs> if you need another ashtray. Oh, are this more? This is tied to the vent header, I bet, as well. So you get air conditioning going, you got more ventilation back here. Uh, the seats are in fair condition, but they're fairly scratched. So we'll see what we can do with that. And the vinyl in the back is dirty. Everything is, it's hard to tell its condition because it's so dirty. These seats are a cinch to take out. Gravel, really? Okay. For, for loving the van, the man did not really overly love this van. I mean, it's in great shape mechanically, but yeah, we we need to make this thing shine, go in the dark. Uh, rear lap, or I'm sorry, rear seat belts there and there. And there's only the two seats in the rear. Uh, the release for this one is on the other side. According to the owner's manual, there's a little logo on the seat that tells you where they're supposed to go, but I haven't seen one yet. Uh, Cause the left and rights are different than the, then they're not all the same because of the, yeah, the seatbelt configuration, I'm guessing. You gotta have these on one side and uh, those are correct too. So they're in the right spot, but it's supposed to say on the, the thing. Uh, map lights, cool, but we'll change these lights to over to LED and the little cover here is actually in the front. So I do have that little bit of awesomeness. Um, anything else in the inside you guys need to know for this? I'm not sure. It's nice and warm in here. I really hate to leave. It's got a little repair on the seat there. We'll see what we can do to make that a little bit less apparent. The blue is growing on me. I thought, Ugh, I don't know if I love this dark blue. It's gonna find maybe one with the gray and maybe transplant it. We'll see what happens after deep cleaning. Like the floor is just atrocious. I would never let any of my poor beasts get this dirty. So we'll just have to see. I hate carpet savers, to be honest with you. I just assume run face carpet and get it dirty and clean it, then have carpet savers grind dirt into stuff. But we'll see how that goes. So let's go take a look at the back from the back and the external tour, and we'll call that a, a, a torrid overview, I guess. Uh, maybe drive it back to its spot. There. So that's fully open, so it actually locks open. And then you actually have to pull that to get it to close. Uh, 15 inch wheels, these are hubcaps. And I think they might be held on. I gotta find out how they're held on. But I have 17s that'll fit right on this car. I think that's what we're gonna do. So here's the deal. This wasn't back here when I drove. To, um, he broke this. So we're gonna have to fix that. I think I have to turn and lift or, yeah, hold on a sec here. Let me turn it. Come on. The hydraulic lifters are lazy. I typically get those at Rock Auto. They're cheap, but they work, and I can't see a thing because of all the exhaust. Moisture. <laughs> ah, there we go. We're holding up ourselves. Our pull-down strap for the rear. It's got a rear window defogger. That's cool. Not sure why that's taped up. Looks like it's broken. These are parts we get off. Ooh, that's the whole tail light, actually. So we'll have to address that as well. Once I find a parts car, I am stripping it of stuff. These seats are scuffed up because he's been sliding stuff in and out. Um, but yeah, that's the interior. So imagine this with all the seats out and it won't be too long. I'll probably do, I'll film everything. So we'll see as we go along in our adventure of exactly what's going on. If you have any questions on this van, they'll get answered. Oh, well, that's cool. There's a little, is that a reflector? And these cargo lights shine down. So if you're loading at night, that's handy. Oops. Uh, oh, really? Um, this is not right. <laughs> I don't know why they put that on there and I gotta figure out how to get it off. You lift from under here. That's how that's done, man. Uh, the stripes are cool, but fading and ripped in places. Yeah. So it's cool, but, but this is, it's not custom, it's just one. Well, that's kind of custom. And Volkswagen? No, sorry, no. Uh, so that's the van in a nutshell. I'm still learning a ton about it anyway. <clears throat> but it's, long story short, it's a GMW body that's got a van van, <clears throat> van uh, chassis on it. So we will uh, we'll work with that. It's also missing one of the roof rack racks. So I might as well just take that one off until I can uh, come up with that there. It does have chrome paneling or stainless steel paneling along the bottom 
I do like that, so that's definitely staying. But I think GM used to two-tone these on his body line here. So we might look at doing something like that. Not sure yet. A lot of cool plans, but we gotta implement them, so that's what we'll do. If you have any questions, ask them. Comments, leave those too. Happy to for your input. My channel's always user guided. Oh, yeah, the tailgate is open. It just winked at me. Let's drop it reverse and back this thing up. Next to the power barn. Actually, where we're going is actually we have a uh, taking the Grand Prix to work tomorrow, but we'll park this on the side. It'll be nice this weekend, so we'll start getting some work done on it then. But for now, you guys have a good day. Um, what things I don't like is uh, something's winding up front, so we're talking power steering pump, it's more likely, or some sort of bearing going on the alternator serpentine belt system. And I can hear the fuel pump, and the tank is in theory full. That's not good. I shouldn't be able to hear the pump. It should be quieter than that. So the pulsator, it's been replaced, and the pulsator's gone, or uh, something's going on with the pump. Um, to fix the gauge, I'll probably drop the pump. So we'll make a video of that, because they're pretty cheap. Um, yeah, you guys have a good day. <laughs>